What's going on guys? It's Nick here. Back with another video. It's Monday. So you know time. It is time for another Mock Draft Monday. It has been requested that we do a 10-team league. This week we've done four in a row that were 12-team leagues. So we'll switch to 10-team league. And we won't do Superflex this week. So your typical setup. Two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end. Seven bench spots. One flex spot, which will now not be allowed to be a quarterback. And everything else usual. As you know, that means... You're going to lean very slightly in 10-team leagues, very slightly towards the quarterback position, towards just the one-off positions, quarterback, tight end, um, just assigning a little bit more value to them. It moves even more in eight-team leagues, but just a teensy bit of a lean. Really just if it's close, we're going to lean towards those spots. Uh, it's not like, you know, super heavy. So we'll put quarterback at slightly high. We'll put tight end at slightly high. Everything else, we're going to keep normal. And we're going to start this one. I think I selected seven. Um, that was one of the spots we have not done yet. Uh, and we did, I think, 12 last week. So just trying to hit all the spots we have not done. So bring up the big board here. Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, Cooper Cup, Austin Eckler, Dalvin Cook, a pretty typical top six. So what we're looking at. Running back. If we want to start off running back, this is half PPR scoring, by the way. Definitely not quarterback. Definitely not going to go tight end. I know I said we can lean tight end early. That's when it's close. It's not close right now. We're not going tight end. So it's only running back and wide receiver. I have, this is a pretty clear choice. I think you basically pick your top two, or your top one, I guess, between Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Personally, you guys know I did the video. I'm selecting Jamar Chase. I have absolutely no issue with anyone who wants to select Justin Jefferson at this spot. I can see an argument for taking a running back, basically saying that we know the value of the running back position. Oh, uh, we know how there's like basically how important it is to hit on these guys. But with how we're going to turn around here in a 10 team league, only six picks are going to come off the board. I still think we can get a solid running back with the next pick. And if we don't, it probably means we can pair what we're going to do with Jamar Chase. And again, go with Jefferson is totally fine there with another insane wide receiver. So, and there you go. So basically what I just said kind of works out. The only case where it doesn't work, where you're not going to get a top running back, is if you can have an insane start to your draft, taking Chase and Jefferson. What happens? Alvin Kamara, Najee Harris, Joe Mixon, Leonard Fournette, DeAndre Swift. We're in a league. All these guys are taking running backs. This will happen in your hometown leagues at times. You will do a bunch of mock drafts, and then you will realize that everyone just like hammers a position. It could be wide receiver this season. Like It could be any position. But people just going way, way, way too hard to position and value opens up. So always say thank you when that happens. Don't go out here and say, oh, I got to take a running back. You know, the data says teams that take running backs early perform better. Don't do that. Look at the value on the board. See Justin Jefferson. Be very, very, very thankful that you were able to get him in the second round and draft him. So we will start off our draft. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, an unbelievable wide receiver duo. Uh, and we will see, I'll pull up the roster here so you guys can continue seeing on the side, Chase, Jefferson, first two rounds. Obviously, there are seven bench spots in the flex, so we can still hammer out wide receivers, but we need to understand that those two will be our one and two every week they're healthy, and it's not week seven or 10. So we don't have a lot of value at the wide receiver position, even though like if you pair Mike Evans in here, yeah, that's absolutely insane. That's something we can consider. But understand that in the third round of a team that took running back first, Mike Evans holds more value to that team because now I have to play Mike Evans in the flex spot. Gives you less flexibility. Just It just hurts your team overall if you make decisions like that. So for those of you listening on the podcast, running back selected after a second pick. Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Jonathan Williams, James Conner, Saquon Barkley. That all makes sense. Wide receivers, only four come off the board. Debo, Adams, Diggs, CD Lamb. We see Pitts and Mark Andrews come off the board just before us with Mark Andrews and only Josh Allen at quarterback. I don't think there's enough value here to go with the quarterback position. You could take Herbert. You could take Mahomes. I think your best bet is just waiting, especially in a 10-team league. The odds go down that people load up on quarterbacks, that you can't get one late. And so the odds are even if you wait a really long time, you're still going to get someone solid. And so I would say that if you're going to grab one of the elite guys, which is still absolutely fine because you want that edge in the 10-team league, if you're going to do that, just make sure it's at a value. And especially the data shows, excuse me, 
did it shows that third round you need to be getting like really really good value i don't think justin herbert here in the middle of the third round is like really good value so no to tight end no to quarterback once again and our lean is not towards wide receiver so that has us looking at running back and saying well who do we like as the most um you know the option that we like the most basically the one we feel best about and i would say david montgomery does kind of stand out i don't think there's a big tier break between like montgomery i think gibson's a tier down between montgomery Akers, zeke Brees hall dobbins etn i don't think there's a huge gap but i think that you know david montgomery is a guy that we know is going to get carries we know he's going to get receptions we have a good feeling that offense is going to be better than it was last season and it doesn't really need to be he's still you know a very very good fantasy running back when he's healthy when he's on the field don't really have any problems going there so the lineup dave montgomery jamar chase justin jefferson we come back to the fourth round now it gets a little bit interesting we know that starting the fourth round it is a neutral outcome to your team if you take quarterback it is obviously always better if you can take players at a value and you know the, the value is not as much of a concern in the fourth round as it was in the third round you have to get a value in the third round and also we're starting to get the range well maybe justin herbert is starting to become a value pull up the draft board only a few picks go by tyree kill mike evans keenan allen t higgins only aj dillon at running back and then mahomes at quarterback as i said before i think you want a screaming value at quarterback i think we can get a really 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 good value later on and so it's no for quarterback for me i did say we would lean tight end but i don't really think that kittle darren waller is a screaming value at 34th overall fourth pick in the fourth round so that's a no to me so again we're saying no to these positions even though you want to lean towards them they're leans and I, I just don't see the value in taking them at wide receiver aj brown stands out Pittman stands out although i can see a world where they run the ball a lot they use a healthy paris campbell they use other players to where Pittman doesn't necessarily like shatters adp 34th overall so i'm fine with it but i feel like at, at this pick if i'm going to go with a third wide receiver i want them to shatter their adp and the only one that i see on the screen right now is aj brown that's, that's the only one i see is capable of being like oh aj brown just finished you know second like as the number two wide receiver i don't really see that in the cards for like most of the players on the board right now and if i'm going to do that it has to be with aj brown so do i take aj brown or look at the running backs and i can take another option that i like it would probably end up being acres because i would go based off adp i love etn i love dobbins i think Brees hall is a good pick but there'd be no reason to take these guys because again we see all these picks come off the board but one of them is still kind of likely to be there at five so why would you take them in the fourth round if you can get them in the fifth round you want to take someone who's not going to be on the board there and acres won't be on the board so for me it's down to acres or aj brown my lean is honestly to take aj brown grab a third wide receiver i feel fantastic about hope that one of dobbins mitchell or etn is still on the board but even if they're not We've still got Miles Sanders. We've still got Clyde. We've still got Kenneth Walker, Chase Edmonds. Not players I'm in love with as my two, but I'd be fine with them as my two if I just crushed wide receiver. So I think it's worth taking the risk, especially because we could see a scenario where we take Brown. We get one of, again, Dobbins, Mitchell, or Etienne, and we come back with one of like Sanders or Clyde, and that would give us three running backs we feel comfortable with, three wide receivers we're in love with, and still probably going to get a really good quarterback. I think that's the way you go. I don't think it's worth taking running back here. We know Brown will be off the board. Our third wide receiver won't be as good. We might still end up with the same kind of caliber running backs. And so I think from like a thought process standpoint, that's what we're going to do. So we make the pick. And it looks like it's kind of going to work out. I'll pull up the draft board again. I believe it looks like a lot of wide receivers came off the board. And they did. Deontay Johnson's off the board. Waddle, Sutton, Cooper, Moore, Brown, as Marquise Brown, and DK Metcalf, only four running backs, Aker, Zeke, Gibson, Brees Hall, and then Justin Herbert does come off the board. He was definitely going to be in consideration for us at 507. So no tight ends. So we still have the option to grab George Kittle. 
our running backs, what we thought before, are still there. We can take Jacobs, Dobbins, Mitchell, or Etienne, whoever our favorite is there. I'm actually honestly not even 100% sure. I'm going to pull up what I have for the rankings in half PPR. Um, I'm going to go through a really big rankings update the day you guys are watching this video. There are some things that are going to end up changing, but let's see. I'll pull up half PPR. I'll scroll down. It looks like who's on the board? Jacobs, Dobbins, Mitchell, and Etienne. Dobbins. No, Etienne. Etienne is first on this list. There was actually that report that came out um, Saturday. It's Saturday or Sunday. Um, that James Robinson has finally resumed running, but he's not able to run like fully yet. I still think we're being optimistic. They're basically hoping that he's back kind of good to go in that like August, September range, which again, we might get a start to the season with Travis Etienne as like the feature back, or we might get a situation where it just takes Robinson a long time. If he can't even run fully yet, he's obviously not getting full training in. We might see a scenario where we, we have Etienne as like a featured running back. You don't find featured running backs usually in the middle fifth round. I don't care if it's only a 10 team league. So I like Etienne, but do we play the ADP game? We have six picks that are going to go by here. We can assume that the rankings here are general ADP. And we know that one team here already has three running backs and a quarterback, probably going to go double wide receiver or wide receiver and tight end at the spot. So at most, we should expect four running backs to come off the board and he's ranked fourth. So it would probably make sense for us to grab Dobbins, even if we have Etienne ranked a little bit higher, because it's more likely at least that Etienne will be there at our next pick. Hope that that happens. If it doesn't happen, we can reevaluate. I would also consider Pittman. It's the fifth round, but I just think going at that fourth wide receiver, I know we'd be crushing it, but it'd be at the expense at this point at running back. And I think if we can get two running backs, it won't be at the expense of running back in these other wide receivers we've gotten. So let's do this. Grab Dobbins. Pray that Etienne's still there. It looks like he's still going to be there. Wide receivers, it looks like, yeah, looks like that team went double wide receiver. So we see Michael Thomas, Mike Williams, Kittle, Pittman, Allen Robinson, Jacobs off the board. And we can now get our favorite running back, who is going to be Etienne. So it definitely worked out for us. And we're actually going to have another opportunity, it looks like, with this pick to take, oh, it looks like quarterbacks coming off the board. We're actually going to have an interesting dilemma at this pick. Um, but like I was saying, even going with this Chase Jefferson, which obviously you do every time, even going with that, grabbing Brown in the fourth round, we were still able to get running backs you feel good about, grab Dave Montgomery, grab Dobbins, grab Etienne. I think it would be sharp to continue that because obviously I feel good about those guys, but like look at everyone else. I feel fantastic about McCaffrey and Javonta Williams or like Jonathan Taylor and James Conner or Swift and Najee Harris, you know, Eckler and Aaron Jones, like I'm still getting crushed at the running back position, which is a very important position to, to hit on. And so I still want to kind of give myself more opportunities because while I feel confident in Montgomery, Dobbins, Etienne, I can't say with 100% certainty that all of these guys are going to work out. And so if I can give myself another opportunity of hitting at a high end option, that's valuable to me. The other thing you're thinking about here is you've seen a little bit of a quarterback run. So after kind of taking a break, we get Herbert in the fifth round. Sixth round, we see, uh, end of the sixth round, we see Jalen Hurts. Seventh round, we see Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, and Joe Burrow. But they're leaving Kyler Murray. They're leaving Dak Prescott, who I agree with, are kind of a tier above everyone else on this list. So two ways of thinking of this. One you can get, you know, let's say Kyler Murray at a, a really, really good value at this pick in the seventh round. We now are not really behind the eight ball at quarterback. No one really has an edge over that. Uh, we're winning this league at wide receiver. We think we're competing at least at running back. And so just grabbing that quarterback, I feel good about we're not falling behind. But the other thought process is teams one, two, three, four, five, and six, all the quarterback and then also team nine has a quarterback. Us and two other teams are the only three that do not have a quarterback. And while teams are likely to take multiple quarterbacks at some point, we got to think that there's a chance we see, you know, 
a, a just a stagnant portion, I guess, of the draft where none get taken. Now, I would expect Kyler and Dak to go off soon. And that's unfortunate because we kind of are left out at the quarterback position. But then a long time is going to go by before the next one. And I think even though Kyler and Dak are probably coming off the board at this pick, I think my team is better off if you simulate this a bunch of times, grabbing Miles Sanders, hoping that the quarterback is there at the next pick. If it's not, we wait an extremely long time, take someone at the end of the draft, because end of the draft here is going to be way better than end of the draft in like a 12 or 14 team league. We're going to get someone we feel very confident in in the final round. And so I think it's just better off. Take Sanders. I know for a fact he won't be there at the next pick. Take Sanders. We'll see at quarterback. They both come off the board. That's fine. Um, again, we we just knew. These guys are taking running backs. Edmonds comes off. Walker comes off. Melvin Gordon comes off. Sean Penny comes off. Sanders is not going to be there at the next pick. Kyler comes off the board. Dak also comes off the board. So we're waiting. Everyone has a quarterback at this point. Do not panic. Become the 10th person. Take Russell Wilson. Even though waiting here means we're not going to get Russell Wilson, someone we love this season, I don't really care. I can grab Stafford, Rodgers, Carr, Tua super late. We can grab our boy Daniel Jones super late. It'll be fine. We will be at a weekly disadvantage. But let's be honest. There are going to be breakouts. I think that Daniel Jones can be a breakout this season. There's going to be someone that we can find on free agency. There will be a team that is in desperate need for maybe wide receiver or running back help. We will be able to acquire a quarterback at value. We'll be able to figure out the position. We'll be able to stream the position. It will be okay. You can stream quarterback in smaller leagues because the free agency is just so insane. But it would be a mistake at this point to allow to allow everyone here to grab all these other guys, get barely a better value, and then take one here. We've made the commitment. We took our running back. Let's wait. Get full maximum value at the quarterback position. So our option now, because we know we're doing that, we can go with Chris Godwin, positive reports, maybe today, maybe yesterday, um, coming from teammates about his recovery. Take that with a grain of salt. Obviously, they're not going to come out and be like, yeah, man, he looks bad, right? Like They're obviously going to say he looks good. But I think we could see him, you know, really, really early in the season. And if he is our fourth wide receiver, well, he's already not starting for us. So I don't really care if he misses, you know, a month of the year. He's behind Chase, Jefferson, and Brown. But I'm probably not going to go there, even though I think it's a good pick, because Clyde's still on the board. And if we can take Clyde as our fifth running back, I pretty much don't even need to draft a running back after this pick. We can draft multiple quarterbacks if we want to. We could draft multiple tight ends if we wanted to. We could grab some high upside wide receivers. We have a lot of options. We've, we'd have five running backs we feel like supremely confident in. There'd be real no no like reason for us to draft like Isaiah Spiller or Damian Pierce or Naheem Hines. Like they just they they're so unlikely to crack our starting roster that we should go with other spots. And I think that grabbing Clyde here just like really just solidifies it enough to where I think that's a good pick. I don't even really think we need to go in other spots. Oh my goodness. That's actually insane. Every single pick after we do that is a wide receiver. One, two, three, four, five, 12 consecutive wide receivers. Juju, Gabe Davis, Godwin, Mooney, Bateman, Burks, London, St. Brown, Smith, that would be Devonta Smith, Lockett, Thielen, Hopkins. I'm not sure I've seen that in one of these mock drafts so far. 12 consecutive wide receivers. Our team, David Montgomery, J.K. Dobbins, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown, Travis Etienne, Miles Sanders, and Clyde. So we're looking good. We're continuing to not take the quarterback position. We want to gain maximum value in every other spot. Tight end is becoming a value here. If we look back, one, two, three, four, five have come off the board, which means there are five teams who do not have a tight end. All these teams, they've got running backs, they've got receivers, they've got quarterbacks. You have to think at this point, a run is coming at the tight end position. So it would be smart for us to take our top option. I can't remember. It's very, very close between Hawkinson and Schultz. 
My guess is that I have Hawkinson ranked very slightly ahead of Dalton Schultz, but I love Hawkinson. I love Schultz. I love Dallas Goddard. I think you do kind of see a tear break. I like Ertz. I like Dawson Knox. Then I would say you kind of have a break after that and you get into like your late options. Pat Fearmouth, uh, Gesicki, Kamen, Fan, like all fine picks, um, all really in consideration if we want to grab a second, but most certainly behind the guys I mentioned before, especially Hawkinson, Schultz, and Gardner. I think that's a pretty clear three. And I think, again, we're going to see a run happen at tight end. So I think it would be very smart for us to take one here and then maybe look back at the wide receiver position. Taking two afforded us the ability to just abandon it for a while. Um, but I think, you know, we're still going to have bye weeks. We're still going to have, especially week seven, we have a bye with Jefferson and Brown. We're going to have weeks where they're maybe injured for a few times. So it's like, it's still smart for us to go back and attack the position. So we'll do that. I'm going to take Hawkinson. I would just go off of the rankings. Does it say Dalton Schultz? Does it say Hawkinson? I don't actually know which one it is off the top of my head. Um, Fearmouth comes off the board before. That's interesting. After we go, Patterson, Ronald Jones, Robert Woods, Kareem Hunt, Fearmouth, James Robinson, and now we have a pick. Again, no quarterback for us. It wouldn't be the worst idea in the world for us to take like Dalton Schultz here. And just say, I kind of set myself up to have the ability to take two tight ends. I'm in a 10-team league. And so, like, I'm taking a tight end I love away from someone else. And I'm basically saying, here are two guys that I can stream throughout the season. But also, like, you know, tight ends relatively unpredictable. I know one of them is probably going to go off this season. I wouldn't say I'm 100% sure in which one. So it wouldn't be a terrible idea to take Schultz force everyone else's hand into worse options keep those guys you can use them for trade bait i typically do not recommend people draft players for trade bait but in this particular scenario it would be like a a back option for you that you have you can stream them figure out which one is best have that option and in the back of your mind is well, someone's gonna need tight end i'm gonna be sitting there i take tight end i take a backup running back I flip them for maybe a top five quarterback. That's just like in the cards, It's a possibility that can happen. So that's an option. Don't think running back's an option. Not doing quarterback is an option. So basically, be do we take Dalton Schultz or do we grab our top wide receiver on the board who is probably Christian Kirk? I don't think grabbing Christian Kirk makes our team any better than if we had grabbed Garrett Wilson, Russell Gage, Tony, Olave... Galladay, I think so much of this range is the exact same that I actually think I would. If this were my draft, I take that, I force everyone else, draft these other tight ends that I do think are lesser, basically get the exact same players at wide receiver after, and the exact same players that I am probably not going to be starting because I have top two options I love, I've got a flex I love. And I can also rotate that flex in at running back plenty of times. With running backs I love, this wide receiver is probably not going to be see the starting lineup very soon in the season. But I could use Dalton Schultz maybe even in week one, especially if uh, Michael Gallup is going to start the season injured. Well, Schultz is going to have a very high target share to start the season. So we find ourselves now in round 11. We have four more picks left. At this point, we've gotten three rounds of value. It is now probably in our best interest to take the quarterback. This is kind of the part of the draft where you could see teams start to grab their second quarterback. They look at the draft board. They're like, "Mm, I don't love these wide receivers. I don't love these running backs. Why not just take quarterback? And they start taking their second. And it's basically, do I think the risk is worth it? I I do see a drop up after Wilson. If someone were to take Wilson from us, is it worth me risking that to get, you know, Kadarius Tony when I could just get someone basically the same anyways, even if he comes off the board? My answer is, yeah, not worth it. Grab someone we like. We do actually see a team grab a backup quarterback. I think locking up that position at a fantastic value, getting him that late, is worth it. We'll end up, oh, I don't even... I've got to click the uh, the defense option here. So we we are not drafting defenses in this league, apparently. 
Well, that's my mistake. I probably deselected it. But you guys know we would draft defense in the very final round of the draft. It doesn't affect your draft decision at all. Actually, if you're drafting this early, don't draft a defense. Just draft uh, another like flex option that you feel good about. So after we go, we see Russell Gage, Chark, Claypool, and Odell go at wide receiver, James Cook at running back, and Matthew Stafford at quarterback. Three picks left. We do need wide receivers. We will probably just draft three wide receivers that we like. We would want pure upside with these receivers. There's no real reason to draft someone like Jacoby Myers. I know Jacoby Myers could, you know, really beat his ADP, be like the wide receiver 35, but Jacoby Myers is just not going to be a top 20 wide receiver. He is in no way going to be starting over Chase Jefferson or AJ Brown, unless they all get hurt, in which case I probably lost the league anyways. Like if I go into a 10 team league having to start Jacoby Myers because Chase and Jefferson are both done for the year, I lost. Like it's just not, it's just not worth even thinking about that scenario. So who has a ton of upside? Tim Patrick has plenty of upside. If we saw an injury to Jerry Judy, we saw an injury to Cortland Sutton, or just he ends up being really good and being featured in this offense. I think he probably needs an injury, but I think there's a world where he can produce without one. Christian Watson has plenty of upside. Uh, Jameson Williams, it has come out that he's probably not going to be 100%. Uh, in week one, it's going to be tough for him to start the season. I expect his ADP to drop. That does not mean you can't draft him. It basically just means you're going to have to keep him on the bench for a while. It's obviously a negative because now you have that bench spot that you kind of can't drop in week one. Maybe he doesn't start playing until week four. We don't really start getting an understanding of the role. It's like, it's like he's definitely a worse pick now. But understand that if you were drafting him with the full intention of keeping him and not starting him until like week eight, nothing has changed. You're just going to get him at a better value now. So it depends on what you're using for that pick. Um, but he's necessarily like less valuable if we don't think he's going to start the season healthy. I would personally say Tony or Galladay probably has the most upside. If that offense is pass heavy as we think, uh, increases in efficiency like we think. Whoever their top option is, is probably going to be the most valuable. I think Tony's the most talented. I think he'll probably end up being the most valuable. It depends how they value him. We're going to learn more, learn more of the summer. But I think the pick here would be Tony. Um, could argue Parker. Again, could argue Galladay. Could honestly argue Christian Watson or Jahan Dotson at this pick. But these guys are so far down here that I feel like it's unlikely that they would be taken. So we take Tony. Um... I probably wouldn't go, jeez, that's weird. The the crew over here that took all these wide receivers comes back. They take all these running backs over here. Um, but then, so another thing, we took the Wilson pick. We see Stafford go. We see Rodgers go, Watson go, Lance go. So, yeah, teams are going to take a backup. Wait long enough to where you don't think they take him. Then snipe it before they can take their next one. But, yeah. We're just going to take two quarterback or two wide receivers. Jahan Dotson will be one of them. I really think he's going to end up being the two. I know they like Curtis Samuel. I know he's talented. If he can stay healthy. But Dotson's like a good talent. I'm starting to really come around to him. So I feel like him with the last pick, it's basically before that, just picking who we think we should take. And I would say it's like, it's Parker or Landry. We've got these reports that Landry's tearing up camp, which, I mean, he's a good wide receiver. It makes sense he's getting positive reports, but don't, don't fall for the trap of thinking that he's just like some god now. I mean, they've got Michael Thomas that's going to probably return once camp starts. Lobby's a fantastic receiver. Yeah, you can be tearing up camp, but like it's you know it's it's OTAs. Like it's not you know it's not really something that we should be paying too much attention to. Um, but Landry would be an option again. I really don't know what the lean here. The lean honestly might be Christian Watson. The lean might be just grab youth, grab players who could do it. I know Watson had those drops, but it's so early. I think that would be the lean. Take Christian Watson. Take Jahan Dotson. We've got our youth. Let's see if one of them breaks out. If not, we'll draft someone You know, later on. Don't worry about the team grades here. Pull this up. And there we have it. Yeah, just finishing that thought. Pure upside. Uh, Christian Watson obviously has all the upside in the world. He's an athletic freak. If he can fix the drops, if he can develop as a receiver, he's got Aaron Rodgers throwing to him in very little competition, that's upside. Chon Dotson, I mean, McLaurin's the one, but there's still upside in being a wide receiver too on like a pretty okay offense, especially if these rookies are still unknown talents. They're good, obviously. We don't know how good they are. These two could be very, very talented 
and have true breakout seasons, that's what I want. Like, I don't want like Jacoby Myers in the final round. At this point, we know who Myers is. He's not going to score touchdowns. He's not going to be like this true number one. We just know at this point. So we don't need to take him late. So here's the team. Russell Wilson, Dave Montgomery, J.K. Dobbins, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson, A.J. Brown, Bench, Etienne, Sanders, and Clyde, Dalton Schultz, Kadarius Toney, Christian Watson, and Jahan Dotson. So that'll do it for this episode of Mock Draft Monday. I will be back tomorrow with a live underdog draft, 8 p.m. Eastern. Come to that with any questions that you have. I will try and answer everyone's questions there. And then Wednesday, we've got another strategy video. I don't actually know which one this is. I'll let you guys know what that is on the Tuesday video if you guys asked during the live stream. But yeah, strategy video on Wednesday. And then Thursday, it'll be a player breakdown. It'll be running back. So stay tuned for that. But that, my friends, is the end of this one. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting the like button? And how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.